Warning, this video may leave you seeing double. <laughs> oh. Welcome to Watch Mojo's Top 5 Facts. In this installment, we're counting down the five most interesting facts about the fascinating and just a little spooky scientific frontier of genetic cloning. No more dugs, that's it. All right, this is all plenty, right. I think. Number five, Dolly the sheep made history. The first living, breathing clone of an adult mammal. Mary had a little lamb, but we cloned one. Dolly was the very first mammal cloned from adult cells. Scottish researchers took a somatic cell from the mammary glands of one adult sheep, fused them to unfertilized egg cells from another sheep, and implanted the cloned embryo into one more sheep. It took 277 tries. But in 1996, Dolly the sheep, named after Dolly Parton, was brought into the world. Um, I thought it would be a good idea to call her Dolly after Dolly Parton. <laughs> I don't think I need to explain any more than that. <laughs> Dolly proved that with the right cells, you can successfully clone an adult mammal. Sadly, Dolly lived for only six years, but her legacy will live on forever. Number four, there is hope in cloning extinct animals. You did. You crazy son of a bitch, you did. This has gotta be the holy grail of genetics. Even as we speak, scientists are working on cloning a woolly mammoth, using tissue samples from a well-preserved carcass found in Siberia. Believe it or not, scientists actually succeeded in cloning an extinct animal before, the Pyrenean ibex, extinct since the year 2000. Using the last ibex's frozen cells, scientists tried the same technique used to create Dolly, and a surrogate mother of a similar species. The process was a qualified success. The clone died minutes after birth due to lung defects. The experiment may not have ended well, but it did show that there is hope for species de-extinction. Life, uh, finds a way. Number three, a South Korean lab will clone your pet. Don't say Bonnie and dead in the same thing, Paolo, please. I'm finding it hard enough to cope. You're not pulling yourself together, are you? Okay, let's say your Shih Tzu just died. Do not put her in the freezer with the corn dogs. Instead, wrap her up in wet bath towels and put her in the fridge next to the hot dogs. You now have five days to get a vet to extract some tissue samples and ship them off to Seoul, South Korea, where Suam Biotech will make you a Shih Tzu number two. However, it's gonna cost you about 100,000 US dollars. Plus that bath towel, cause you're never gonna use that again. I want you to go down to Repat and get Oliver replaced. Also, while your clone puppy may look like your old pal, there's no guarantee that they'll behave like the original. So you could be paying 100 grand for a blank canvas. That's your personal choice, but we often say try a different breed, try a different gender, because we don't want you to try to actually replace the pet. Number two, the first animal ever cloned was a sea urchin. That famous sheep may have been the first animal cloned from adult cells, but technically the first animal ever to be cloned was a sea urchin, way back in the 1880s. German biologist Hans Driesch experimented on a two-celled sea urchin embryo by dividing it into two embryonic cells. He expected them to create two halves of one sea urchin. What he got instead was two complete and separate sea urchins. Was it a fluke? No, not really. This experiment showed that each cell in the embryo is pluripotent, meaning it has its own set of genetic instructions and can turn into a full organism, as in the case of twins. <laughs> twins, yes! We're going to see the twins! In fact, some argue that Driesch wasn't actually cloning, but artificially twinning. Aren't they magnificent? They're men, Dwight. I love finding a good set of twins. Something is wrong. Number one, human cloning is widely outlawed. This might come as a downer, but despite the wild claims of a few small groups, there's no proof of cloned humans ever being created. Many countries and states make a distinction between cloning for reproductive purposes and for therapeutic purposes, and create laws to restrict or prohibit one or both. Today I am issuing a directive that bans the use of any federal funds for any cloning of human beings. People and lawmakers are mostly concerned with the ethical questions that human cloning raises. For instance, if you clone yourself, would you be able to steal your clone's organs when yours falter? Well, what do we do if it doesn't work? Kill us both, Spock. <laughs> Or if we really start playing with the human genome, wouldn't that open the door to eugenics? And most importantly, what would happen if you clone your clone? You can't just go around cloning people. That's just, that's crazy. So how about you? Would you pay a hundred grand for a clone of your dog? And it makes me wonder if people have let you down in your life. And what would you do if someone you didn't like started cloning themselves? For more ethically ambiguous top tens and wet towel top fives, be sure to subscribe to watchmojo.com.
They've destroyed every building in town, except Moe's Tavern, which is reporting record business. Okay. 